We love to celebrate when America's number one. And we're number one in a lot of things. We're number one in defense spending, we're number one in women's soccer, and keeping women out of the Oval Office. <laughs> that was not a good thing, just to clarify. Uh, but we're also number one in absurdly high cell phone bills due to a lack of competition, as just four carriers account for a 98% market share. Now, the average cell phone bill in the US is about $100 a month, which is about double what they pay in France. And that's despite French cell phone bills, including mandatory fees for specific French emergencies, like choking on a croissant, <laughs> or a uh, baguette fight, or seeing a suspicious woman. <laughs> that's the French perspective, not mine, just, just to be clear. Um, cell phone bills in the US are higher than any country in the European Union. Now, you know the European Union as a political and economic trading bloc, but it's also a term used to describe Melania's inevitable hookup with the pre president of uh, France. <laughs> now, if US plans were priced like Europe, Americans would save about $30 a month, which is more than you can save by switching to GEICO. <laughs> now, on average, cellular data costs in the US about 16 times that of Europe. 16 times. That's almost half as many times as Trump has tried to bang Ivanka. I mean, the Trump, the biggest conspiracy theory is that he hasn't gotten to Bangi Banker yet. I mean, he's probably in the Oval Office right now with his phone out, tweet, about to tweet, you know, our forefathers, our forefathers created uh, laws on incest which are totally unfair to people with hot daughters. Democrats must help me fix, sad. <laughs> now, in the, uh, in the US there's four major carriers, but prices are more akin to markets where there's just three major carriers or three major players. And incidentally, three major players is also a term used to describe Beyonce's marriage. The third player is Solange. <laughs> now, US mobile hotspot pricing is, pricing is even crazier. Verizon charges $700 a month for their 100 gigabyte mobile hotspot plan, compared to about $25 a month in many European countries. Now, Verizon can do this because that's part of an oligopoly. An oligopoly is a term used to describe a market characterized by a, lot, uh, by a small number of large sellers. Hey Siri, how do you define oligopoly? Oligopoly markets have few suppliers. Think Coke or Pepsi, Windows or Mac. Siri or that basic bitch Alexa. She thinks she's so cool just because her daddy Jeff Bezos is still alive. But let's be real, when it comes to exploiting your personal data for profit, I'm in a league of my own suckers. <laughs> That's how Siri says suckers. Uh, so, oligopoly makes it easier to price gouge consumers and helps AT&T and Verizon make out like bandits. Uh, sadly, uh, these, the, the, these bandits are hard to find, kind of like AT&T's 4G service. <laughs> now, because they price gouge and overcharge, uh, profit margins for AT&T and Verizon have uh, really skyrocketed over the past few years, much to the benefit of their shareholders. In fact, AT&T recently announced a $4 billion share buyback. Now, there are so many better uses for $4 billion than AT&T stock. I mean, if I had that kind of money, I'd get the show on TV, which would cost a few million dollars, and the rest, and the rest I would spend on last month's AT&T bill. <laughs> AT&T and Verizon are also monopoly internet providers in many parts of the country, which means they can entice consumers into bundles that can be hard to, uh, hard to leave. Kind of like the party of your friend whose Instagram suggests that he's a model. <laughs> That's an actual picture, it's not photoshopped. Um, so these companies also own significant media assets, which makes it easy for them to perpetuate industry talking points, like how consumers must pay for infrastructure investment in the US because it's a big country with many sparsely populated regions. But that also describes Australia, and their prices are a lot lower than ours, and they have a ton of poisonous snakes. Wait. Is that the Nokia theme from way back when? Wow, it's a snake from the classic game! Snake, what are you doing out here? Hey Ollie Oscar, I can't talk right now. I'm having a weird day, man. You see, all of these bits just appeared in my void and I have a date coming over later. I gotta clean up! A snake with a messy void? Well, that just won't do. Also, I'm pretty sure my butt's just getting bigger. <laughs> anyway, every time I try to clear one of these things, another one just pops up. See? So, what will you do? What can I do, Holly Oscar? <laughs> I've got to keep cleaning. <laughs> and this new bit just popped up. My date's coming over. Oh my god, I knew my bowl was getting bigger! Oh my god, Holy Oscar, I'm poisonous as fuck and I just beat myself! I'm gonna die! Oh my god, I'm gonna die! Holy 
out. <laughs> Get the upgrade. <laughs> uh, give it up to the dead snake. So, so, speaking of snakes, Sprint and T Mobile have been given the go ahead to merge, leaving the US to, with just three carriers just in time for 5G. Although T Mobile and Sprint argue that their merger will lead to more consumer choice, lower prices, and more jobs. But you have to be an idiot to believe, believe that. <laughs> Looks like Rudy over here needs a primer on how cell phones work. And we're going to give him one thanks to our guest, Tommy the Fifth Grader. Give, give it up for Tommy, everybody. Uh, Ali Oscar? You didn't say there'd be people here. Um, yes, I did, Tommy. I said it was a show. I wasn't really listening. <laughs> do you still want to do your science fair presentation? Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Cell phones. Uh, how do they work? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know, but now I do. <laughs> when you call your friend, it sounds like they're right next to you. Hi, friend! <laughs> but actually, it's a tiny person trapped in your phone <laughs> who's excellent at doing impressions of all of your friends. I don't think that's how cell phones work, Tommy. It is! <laughs> Tommy, how much work did you really put into your science fair project? Twenty? <laughs> now, I'm sure you're wondering, how, how do they get a tiny person in, into your phone? Yeah, I was wondering that. Hey, how do you get in there? <laughs> well, it's a shrink ray. In 1989, Rick Moranis accidentally shrunk his kids. And they used the same technology to, to trap people in, in phones. Uh, first off, no. And secondly, where did you learn all of this, Tommy? I mean, there, in the movies in that phone, uh, there were phones in that movie. I learned it from a Rick Moranis themed nightmare. <laughs> he wasn't scary, just disappointed in me. <laughs> now, I'm sure you're wondering what happens when you tap your phone. T tap <laughs> Every time you tap your phone, you're bopping that little man on the head saying, Hey, check my TikTok. <laughs> Tommy the fifth grader, everybody. Thank you, Tommy. So now let's turn to Israel, a country that experienced oligopoly in the cell phone uh, service market several years ago. Now, in 2009, cell phone bills in Israel were four times the OECD average. Four times. That's nearly half as many times as Meghan McCain name drops her father every hour on The View. <laughs> now, around 2009, the Israeli cell phone market was dominated by the big three, Cellcom, Orange, and Pelophone. Uh, three operators also describes the number of people in the Pence marriage, Mike, Mother, and Jesus. Now, I would argue that Jesus was a brown guy since he lived in the Middle East, but there's no way that Mike Pence would worship a brown guy, so we kept the white Jesus picture instead. <laughs> now, you may be wondering what the solution was to this issue. Did the Israelis come up with an uber-Israeli solution, like denying high cell phone bills by treating them like their Palestinian claims to sovereignty? Um, that's not what happened. Instead, new communications minister Moshe Kalon lowered prices through three principal means. Boosting competition, lowering roaming rates, and decoupling payment plans. Now let's start with competition. 
Kalong made the market more competitive by issuing wireless licenses to firms seeking to enter the market. Ironically, the word license can also be used to describe Trump, since he lies a lot and he makes no sense. My sense. <laughs> So, to ensure new entrants would be competitive, Calon repaid their spectrum fees, provided that they achieved certain uh, coverage and market share goals over time. This meant that Israel effectively gave away spectrum for free. I guess in Israel they're really feeling the burn. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, here in America, Trump is still feeling Ivanka. <laughs> and the flag. <laughs> Now next, Israel lowered roaming rates and forced incumbents to lease their networks to MVNOs. MVNOs are operators without their own physical infrastructure. It stands for Mobile Virtual Network Operator. If you see Gwyneth Paltrow, please, please let her know this, because she thinks it stands for My Vagina's Nice Odor. <laughs> Israel also decoupled monthly uh, payments for phones from service agreements. So if a customer is unhappy with their telephone service, they can cancel their plan with telephone while con continuing to make device payments to Cellcom. Um, and so in this way, it's kind of like a Trump policy. Trump has an agreement with Melania, but he makes payments to Stormy Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> and to top it all off, Israel blocked mergers between wireless carriers. Meanwhile, here in the US, T-Mobile and Sprint have been allowed to merge, leaving us with just three carriers, which is an absurdly low number. I mean. Saudi princes have more wives than we have wireless carriers. <laughs> now, Israeli telcos push back hard. They argue that Kalan's plans threaten their profitability and would hurt their ability to invest in infrastructure and also cause mass redundancies, which is a Hebrew term for Eric Trump. <laughs> Industry opposition to reforms was so intense that wireless carriers influenced as advertisers saw some in the press attack Kalan. In fact, one wireless carrier even tried to buy an Israeli newspaper. Things got so heated that Kalon's own daughter asked him if it was true that he had declared personal bankruptcy, as she had seen uh, reported on the news falsely. But I would argue that this fake news story is actually heartwarming, because it proves Americans and Israelis have more in common than just militarism. But, and despite an onslaught of attacks and obstacles, Moshe Kalon stood firm and stuck to his grounds because no amount of money could get him to change from his plans. He's not this guy. <laughs> so, what was the impact of the reform? Well, two new companies entered the market and undercut the big three incumbents on price, which forced those incumbents to match them on price, triggering a price war, and prices fell about 60%. That's going down quicker than Bernie's chance of being the Democratic nominee. <laughs> hey, thank Beto. <laughs> In fact, new entrant Golan offered unlimited talk, text, and data for $30 a month. Uh, and Sunny Communications offered unlimited talk and text and 50 gigs of data per month for just $420. Blaze it. Uh, one third of customers switched service provider in 2013, and those that didn't switch often got lower prices without having to switch parties like this guy. <laughs> so within three years of reforms taking place, Israeli consumers had saved $4.5 billion on their cell phone bills, which is $4.4 billion more than the net worth of this guy. <laughs> and despite doomsday warnings, carriers remained profitable and upgraded their infrastructure. If only Israelis could also upgrade their prime minister from this guy. Oh. We're going to take a break. When we come back, Asha Shekta will be joining us. But first, a few messages from our sponsors.